walking outside this morning into the snow, early February 2015, looking at my Land Cruiser 78 covered in snow, got me thinking to what a story this vehicle has to tell. It's about four years old now. I received it from Toyota South Africa after they had had it for about six months and it turns out that this was the vehicle that Toyota South Africa used for the homologation of the 78 Rupee into South Africa. When a manufacturer brings a vehicle into a country it has to bring a sample of what will be sold on the showroom floor and with that it's taken through various tests to make sure that everything works correctly. It's given its homologation certificate and then the, uh, the vehicle can be sold out of showroom floors. This was the vehicle. It was also the vehicle used for the photo shoots. Here are some of those pictures now. Um, those pictures are still on the Toyota South Africa website, uh, even to this day. And in fact, I was sent those pictures. I'm a member of the press corps, so they sent me all the pictures when the vehicle was launched. Little did I know that I would eventually own that vehicle. Then, of course, the vehicle went through a a major transformation at a company in Cape Town called Alucab. I had actually designed the roof system myself. Turned out that I, my, my idea wasn't original. In fact, that, that particular th design, similar to mine, not the same, but similar, had been built in Germany for a while. And, uh, and South Africa, Alucab and South Africa were considering something like it. They'd also seen the, the, the German equivalent. So when I went there with this vehicle, they said, yeah, okay, well, we should give this a good try. And I said, well, here's the guinea pig. So again, the vehicle, second time, the vehicle was used as a guinea pig and hugely successful as a camping overland vehicle. It is a thorough joy to, to use, um, well I love the vehicle itself but just as a camper it's it's really fantastic and then uh, quite a long period of time it sat in South Africa and then I decided to bring it with me here in uh, to the UK and it's taken me six months to get all the paperwork done N not all my fault there were other issues uh, with with shipping um, it was just it just took time and I wasn't in a big big hurry this vehicle's very very long journey from Durban has finally come to an end and I'm here at Tilbury Docks collecting it. Uh, now the, uh, what confronts me now is the painful process of having it registered in the United Kingdom. Oh, well that's interesting, there are two DeLoreans over there. Isn't it fine with the snow sitting on it? So this vehicle really has a great story to tell. Two years ago I was sitting on my own in a riverbed in Namibia when I stopped for lunch. And as one does when one is on one's own, I began to think. And that is what has brought me here, to this paint shop. I've just had one of those eureka moments. One of those moments where you get an idea about doing something. And what colour are you going to paint it? Green. Out of the blue. Just, just comes into your head and you know it's inspired, you know it came from somewhere else and just whammo. Those of you who have been on safari with, with groups, you will know that so often the conversation around the campfire is about vehicles. <laughs> How to equip them better? Who, more, who make what m makes what product? Whose is better than whose? And the the equipment that we have on these vehicles, all of the manufacturers, they're all looking for the holy grail of tent and equipment design, and that is the easier it is to use to set up, the better. Bottom line. My Eureka moment. I am going to design, develop, build using all of my knowledge that I have collected over almost 30 years of doing this. The ultimate two person expedition four wheel drive. And so to work. Firstly, I don't want the vehicle to look like an ambulance. 
and being white, it just can't help itself. I've chosen an olive grey green used by Toyota to paint its Land Cruisers back in the 70s. The Land Cruiser 78, sometimes called the Troopy, is, well, about as basic a vehicle as you can get. Let's see. It's underpowered, has lousy brakes, the ride is awful, the tyres are too narrow, the rims are ugly and not wide enough, it's noisy and, well, that's enough to get on with, I think. However, it's the perfect platform for an overland vehicle, being uncomplicated, extremely robust and as reliable a vehicle as is available today. It's no secret that a standard Land Cruiser, the ride is truly awful. Unless, of course, you're a farmer and you carry coal or pigs in the vehicle all of the time. So the first thing I have to do, I really have no choice at all, and it's change the suspension, including shocks and springs. Because when this vehicle is empty and it has leaf springs at the back, it will tend to be a little bit jumpy with, with no load. So, springs that will be comfortable on the road with no load, air helper springs to assist it when it's fully load laden, give it, better, give it better a ride. This is one of the noisiest and busiest four-wheel drive workshops in the country. It's Alu Cab in Cape Town. I brought my vehicle here to have them equip the inside because they do some superb camping modifications, not only to Land Cruisers but to Land Rovers and a magnificent Unimog over there. Really, really good work. I brought it here because we're now going to discuss what I want personally and that's the amazing thing while they build canopies for the general market you know off the shelf manufacture standard canopies they also do brilliant uh, customized work and this vehicle is definitely going to need customizing fact is that the inside of the Land Cruiser 78 Troopy it's like a cave it's enormous which means we can do a lot with it with me is Warwick Leslie, one of Alucab's senior project managers. I mean, that's my, that's my very, very basic idea. Yeah. And the, the line through the He's going to be in charge of interpreting my ideas and bringing them to life. Okay. I thought the fridge on the passenger side. Yeah. This is the kind of thing that you don't do in a hurry. This is the part of the project that I have been dreading the most. because I have a perfectly good Land Cruiser and I'm about to take a saw to it. Too late now. And now with the roof off, the real work can begin. Improving a vehicle's ride comfort is every bit as important as its practicality. The interior sound levels, especially in this vehicle, having a large, almost empty space behind the occupants, are going to be high. So some sound insulation is needed. I've been working with a company called Tackler. Now Tackler are well known for making seat covers. They also make load liners, protection for the low bay of vehicles, and a thing called tack mats, which is basically protection for the carpet. Now working with them in conjunction with an acoustic engineer, we've developed a new product. 
It's a floor mat, but a floor mat with sound absorbing qualities. Not only does it insulate sound, but heat too. And it's machine washable and it looks fantastic. Back at Alucab and the work goes on. By now the most critical inbuilt tent is coming together nicely. Okay, so as you can see what we've done here is we've cut the roof off the Land Cruiser. So we've created a camper solution out of possibly one of the best vehicles that we could pick to do what we want them to do here. What will happen ultimately when this is all complete is that the roof will pop up. You can sleep above your driver, seat, driver and passenger seats. And if the need arises in bad weather situations, you can push your bed out of the way and have a living area inside. You can enter and exit the tent internally, which is obviously nice and rain and cold and so on and so forth. Um, and then what we've done at the back, and we're still obviously in process, is we are doing a basic packing system just to get the bare essentials. 80 litre fridge in front, two separate 60 litre water tanks either side, battery system and then some very simple basic storage trying to keep it limple, simple, light and easy to use. It's a, it's a nice day, it's a good day today. But there's still a lot of clouds and the, the rain is still threatening. It's mid 2012 and this has been for, I think, for now, I've been here 19 years living in Cape Town and this has been the most miserable, depressing, wet, After soggy, meters, cold, right, cold then, winter that, then I, turn ahead. that I can remember. But today, there is something that is definitely going to warm the cockles of my heart. I am going to fetch my new Land Cruiser. The Land Cruiser that I conceptualized two years ago. <laughs> there, there it is. You see, it's starting to rain again. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> so what do you think? I think it's very cool. Hey, it's I'm nice, eh? Proof will be in the pudding, but I think it's going to work out really nice. That's nice. That's going to be useful. The whole purpose of this is that I find that with pickups, you, you need to be able to get out. Normally what I do is in a station wagon, I would get my camera gear, tripods and things off the back seat if I'm not traveling with people. Well, what do I do here? So that's the idea. I just climb out, grab my camera gear and, and set it up. So that's why I specified that opening. Everything is a compromise to a degree. Exactly. Otherwise we'd all be driving around in Rolls Royces. You know exactly. what I mean? You know, so, but no, that's fine. It's a, it's a minor little thing. Speed by people. I wanted to ask you, how do you feel about signing? We just want it like the door, the panel, and across to the ah. back, and then around there, and then uh, the guy's on his way. <laughs> no. You're not fooling me, Jeremy. Open the other cab on the front and the roof there. Yes, absolutely you fine. Mind if you do one at the back as well? Not at all. Not a problem at all. I've got a few stickers that I'm going to put on. I don't want it to look like a rally car, but I also want to say, you know, we, we built this car, so that's great. Okay. I'm going to stick on the autograph sticker on the door. How are the batteries mounted? Strapped down. This is great. And it looks good. It looks good. So, so I mean, it, I, I'm hoping to travel to drive this vehicle to London. Hoping, yeah. hoping. And I'm going to have to do a lot of editing on the way. Yeah. So I can set up at a workstation in here. Yeah. You know, and free from the dust and things like that. See that the whole purpose of this is that I want, I like my camping to be simple and straightforward, but I also like the luxuries. I want to be able to set up camp and have a kettle on in five minutes. And that's the whole concept behind this. And when I leave after camp, you know, finishing, 10 minutes tops. 
from the time I start packing the vehicle to the time the wheels start rolling, 10 minutes tops. That's, the, that's what I've conceptualized. So now I've got to go and test it and put that to the test with two people traveling. That's going to be the most fun, I think. So now I'm in a rather dreary location outside Cape Town, trying to solve another one of the Land Cruiser's shortcomings. It's brakes. Every single Land Cruiser in the 76, 70 range, 76, 78, and 79 pickup have bad brakes. Well, not bad brakes, just soft. Uh, you know, in, in an emergency stop, the thing just doesn't stop. So I'm trying out something to solve that problem. So the company I chose, or approached, and asked them how to solve this problem is called Power Brake. Well, here I am with my daughter Kate, who's concentrating filming with the other camera uh, on a beach at Port Nolith. Now, the purposes, <coughs> purpo purposes, many purposes of why we're here is to firstly have a daddy and daughter outing. Secondly, probably less important, is to test the new green Land Cruiser that I built, part of a two-year project. And it should be fun. Fun, do you hear? Fun. Fun. <laughs> Port Nollis is located on the west coast, the grey green Atlantic coast. And what we're around now, the, the, the weather we're experiencing now is part of the hurries, the, the cold ocean and the warm land and the fog that comes in uh, mostly in the morning, sometimes in the evenings. And that's what we're experiencing now. A very desolate landscape, a very beautiful landscape in its own way, but very badly damaged by the mining companies. This entire area is restricted uh, access because of the uh, Alexandra Bay diamond mine. So it's um, uh, a bit frustrating because most of the coast is inaccessible. Fresh air at its best. What? <laughs> well, what's your name? My name is Kate. Uh, and then? And... Uh, Do you remember you were in Botswana? And I like to crush cans. Did, was that you? Crush yeah, it. that was me. Did you really crush those cans? Yeah, I crushed them all by myself. Um, <laughs> you liar. I did. <laughs> um, um, crush it by myself. I've always considered South Africa to be a remarkable country in terms of diversity of landscape, of vistas, of scenery. You don't really, almost no matter where you are in the country, have to drive for more than about three hours and the scene changes, sometimes utterly. Except for here. This Port Nolith is where I consider this rather dull, flat, desolate coastline begins. And in fact, it goes up, right up through Namibia into Angola. That would constitute at best two full, if not three full days of driving. ago this month this idea this land cruise the idea for this vehicle began I was sitting in the Hoerner River all on my own in Namibia and I pulled pulled aside and I, I was sitting there thinking about setting up camp thinking about how much I needed a shower it had been several days and I was looking at my Land Cruiser 105 there and thinking to myself while it's a fantastic vehicle it wasn't great for living out of because it's a station wagon and I had the idea of actually building the ultimate two-person overland vehicle the most stunning expedition four-wheel drive
And this is the result of that dream. And the idea now is I'm in the Northern Cape. The roads are rough. The scenery is fantastic. The environment is exactly what this vehicle is designed for. And I thought I had to bring it here. I had to bring it somewhere where I could actually test it. I want to test it in terms of the vehicle. I want to test it in, test it in terms of the camping. How good is it? Uh, how fast can I set up camp? I want it simple, easy, efficient, and nice to live with. And that's why I'm here. Um, I'm gonna just see if I can get up here. Then okay. you can pass me the camera. All right. Kate climbs up to get a better camera position. Both my youngest daughters are errant filmmakers. I suppose following in their daddy's footsteps. Now, well, what will rough roads prove? They will prove that the suspension configuration works. Now, I must tell you that I fitted a set of springs and shocks recommended by the store. I'm not going to go into details about which store and what suspension, but I wasn't happy. And I wasn't happy because with no load, the vehicle was horrible to drive. And with a load, it was okay. I needed to be good in both spheres of operation. I, I know that there's going to be a compromise, compromise somewhere along the line. But now I know if I've got it right or wrong. On the way here, on the open road, fine. Really, really good. And on these corrugations, guess what? This thing is riding beautifully. But the standard product wasn't right. We've stumbled across loaves of bread scattered over the road. They must belong to somebody. Shame, those poor people probably take this to the market and sell it. I hope they realize it's gone before it gets so stale that it's completely ruined. And we'll put it in the shade. Do you want a sandwich? <laughs> At last we reach the beautiful ribbon that cuts through this desert landscape, the Orange River. Hard. Our next challenge is to find a campsite at the edge of the river. We've got to see if there's a pathway to the... There's a beautiful camping site over there. No, no way. This is very, very slippery and muddy. And there's just a line of rocks. So, go look somewhere else, somewhere else. Okay, the sand has become very, very soft. So, down the pressures go to one bar. You know, this 1HZ engine, for all its faults, the fact that it's the only engine ever built that actually registers on the Richter scale when you shut it down, that it's a bit of a dog on the open road. For driving over this kind of terrain, there is nothing in the world better. Our perseverance has paid off. We found a beautiful grassy bank right at the edge of the fast moving river. So what do you think, Kate? Thumbs up. But as far as Kate is concerned, of course, there is no time to lose. Keep the rod up a bit, yeah, that's good. That's good. Let him tire himself out. You're doing just fair perfectly. We just don't want to lose him. Okay. This is a big one. It's a big one. Keep the rod up. Try and keep the rod up. And just let him tire himself out. What is he? Oh, it's huge! It's a very, very big barbel. Oh my word! Let him go, let him go. <laughs> oh, he's getting tired. It's yeah. the biggest fish I've ever caught. Can I have a photo with him, Dad?
Well, early morning. Lauren Trivet. Not a particularly settled quiet night. Quite a bit of wind. Came up viciously a few times during the night. Enjoying the magnificent sunrise. What I did last night before actually as as we arrived, I put two pegs in the river. I was concerned that the river would suddenly come up and uh, you know, we're very close to the water's edge. So I put two sticks and by midnight last night, the water level had actually dropped. I need to find out what it's doing now, whether it's coming up or going down. I'm a bit confused, to be honest with you. I can't see them. Oh, wow, there they are. The water level has dropped a huge amount. Now they were on the water's edge and look what the water's done. There you go. Small yellow fish. Now, the Orange River is full of them. Right now, this is the easy on bat awning. Now, it's a bit windy today, so I recommend, and this is only, I must tell you, the second time I've ever erected it. So if I fumble a bit, it's because it's not familiar to me. But when it's windy, like it is now, you have to peg it down and best get two people to help you do it. It's well thought out, lightweight, and I love it. I must say I'm very impressed. The awning is called the Batwing 270. It's because it spreads 270 degrees around the side and back of the vehicle. This is the campsite. This is the new Land Cruiser, and we've actually been camping. So it's a little bit of a mess, but I'm not going to dress it for you. This is real life. And I want to show you now the concept behind this Land Cruiser. Now, when developing it, I decided that it was important that I could arrive, set up camp, have shade, have a fire going, and a cold drink in my hand within five minutes. I think I have exceeded that expectation. The tent, putting up the tent, is incredibly quick. We did it last night. Here's the clip. This is actual real time, and this is how long it takes me to erect this tent. There's nothing more to do with the tent. My bed is inside, sleeping bags, blankets, pillows, they're already there. So it's done. But the great thing about that tent is that inside the vehicle, full height. So that's the bed. So I have all of this working space. And if I want to sleep, I do this. I pull the bed down. Okay, you might need to, you see, this is genuine. Pajamas, sleeping bags, pillows, you can leave them like that, you see? So, now, if I want to climb into bed, I just stand on there and climb into bed. And I have all the ventilation I need, all the view I need, and when I'm finished, I simply do this. Now, the beauty is, I mean, last night it was, it was very, very windy and it got really quite unpleasant outside. We came in here, we left the door open so there's ventilation, we made ourselves a meal, completely protected from the weather. And now with my computer as I'm filming these TV shows, I can, you know, have a workstation right here, protected from dust and weather. So I have storage spaces and the two sliding drawers. They're long and narrow, which I've discovered to my pleasant surprise, they're actually far more efficient than wide flat ones. Much more efficient. Uh, let me take you around the rest of the vehicle. I have put an opening catch here, mainly because when I'm filming I like to jump out of my vehicle. And normally I would have a station wagon with four doors, I would just open the back door and grab my 
kit if I was traveling alone or just with one other person. This is designed for just one other person, two people. So I've put this opening here. Others might like it on the other side because they're not interested in the same things that I'm interested in. They have their own particular needs. So when developing this, uh, this vehicle, while I developed it, the idea and concept to actually produce vehicles for other people, sell vehicles to other people, this particular one is done for me. And this part, the interior part, and this kind of idea, we actually do for the client. So if you're interested in this car and you might say, well, you know, I wouldn't want it on that side. Well, that's fine. I understand that. The inside in this part is pure customization. Right. Uh, the interior. Of course, the most important part of any such vehicle is the driver's cab. What I've done here is I've tried to make my life easy. I've made a power box. Now this cable down here is busy charging my GoPro and I can charge other things. I have 220 volts, my other battery chargers, my laptop, um, power supply, CDs, binoculars and books. I've never had a vehicle with an overhead console like this and I can't tell you how fantastic it is having something so close and so convenient. This is a second fridge. I use it just for cool drinks and chocolates and things like that and I only have it switched on while I'm driving. I turn it off when camped because two fridges is going to stretch the battery capacity a little bit too much. It also makes a fantastic armrest. Now, this bull bar, why did I choose this particular one? It's a TJM bar. Why did I choose it? I chose it because it's airbag compatible and it's also cooling compatible. A lot of bull bars fitted to vehicles that are not proprietary, not well tested, can affect your cooling, can affect your airbags. Uh, you, will, you won't know if it's affected your airbags until after you're killed in an accident and you'll know that it's affected your cooling because you'll be on a trip and you'll be overheating and you'll be pulling your hair out wondering why it's overheating. I've used a TJM winch. It's not the best winch on the market. For the person like me, who needs a winch occasionally, who needs to recover myself or somebody else occasionally, why spend a huge amount of money on a winch? It's a good quality, medium, you know, in the middle of the range, winch has a plasma rope, which means it's lighter. And that's why I chose it. Now, the split charging systems. I could go on and on for half an hour telling you about how so many of them that have been on the market for so long actually don't work. Well, it's not that they don't work. They kind of work. So if you don't know, you think they're working, but they're actually not working and they don't put back the current that you take out of the battery. They just don't put it back. They put some of it back enough to think that you think it's working. This is a CTEC DC to DC charger. They have solved the problem of deep cycle batteries in motor vehicles. And this particular one also has a solar system built into it. So I have a simple plug, I plug in my panels, boom, I'm done. It's literally plug and play. I don't even have to think about it. And because of this, it's so clever, I don't have to think about my batteries. They just get charged and it just works. Very large spotlights and turbo diesel engines are a very bad idea, even if it's an aftermarket turbo like this. So I fitted these HID high intensity discharge lights. They're small, they're incredibly powerful and they will not affect my cooling. You know, one can take protection too far. I don't believe, unless you're doing very heavy duty rock crawling and things like that, about lots and lots of protection under the vehicle because of their weight. But I do believe in this. The standard side steps are ugly, weak, and just do not do the job. These are made by Gobi X, part of R&D Off-Road, and they are brilliantly designed. They also protect the bodywork from flying stones. It's a decent step. It sticks out just far enough almost as far as the, as the wheel arch. Very, very nice piece of kit. Another piece of protection is this Gobi X bash plate. It's designed to protect the steering bar and underside of the engine.
One of the final tests I must do is to test the hot water shower system. Okay, the shower system now. I've erected a shower tent. It's one of those flop up ones that takes seconds to erect. Pegged it out and now turn on the pump and look, hot water ignites it. Lilliman, watch your feet. Are you still filming? Yeah. Uh. Now for serious overland travel, two spare wheels are a necessity. I haven't got two here. I don't think this is serious overland travel. I'm talking about Trans-Africa. You need two spares. So you need some way of carrying them on the back bumper. This particular one is made by LS Sport. And the tires that I've selected are BF Goodrich. The reason why I've selected them is purely because I can't think of a tire that I would actually prefer to fit on my vehicle. On my previous set of all terrains, these are mud terrains, first time I've tested them, I had 72,000 kilometers of overland travel and not a single puncture. This is the bit that matters. How long will it take us to pack away the tent, pack away the awning, get the car going? Let's see how long it'll take us to do it. There you go, a little over five minutes to pack away the entire tent. No need to walk around the vehicle trying to get the canvas right. in and getting myself all dirty in the process. I decided now uh, tonight to make a change from the, the campsite at the river and that is to find a place where Kate can experience utter and complete silence. And I found a beautiful spot between the rolling sand dunes and we've set up camp. Well, I must now conclude my test of the, the Land Cruiser Autograph Overlander and have to say that I can't remember a time when I've built an off-road vehicle that I've been more excited about the results. We've got the suspension right, the accommodation and tent. That is the biggest rooftop tent by far. It was a good test last night because it got quite cold, dropped down to probably five or six degrees. The insulation from underneath is fantastic. You don't get that kind of insulation in any kind of rooftop tent that sits on a roof rack. Here, I, it was very, very warm and together with the heavy fabric that is being used for the actual tent structure itself, that's very, very, it was very, very warm inside that tent. The comfort inside the front of the vehicle, the insu sound insulation, uh, I should mention our tyres, at least these BFG muds are quite noisy. That does affect the noise inside the vehicle. Not, it's not extreme, but it is there. I do notice it above about 60 kilometres an hour. Um, uh, what else? The protection um, from Gobi X Manufacturing looks good, is efficient. The turbocharger from SAC gives me that extra bit of power. I can get past the trucks. It makes all the difference from turning it into a dog into a, well, I wouldn't say a whippet, but uh, certainly it moves, it goes, it, it will pull. When you want it to, it will react. Whereas the old one remains a, a bloodhound that has just had a large lunch. Uh, other than that, fantastic. and of course the fun has now begun because the sand is very very thick very slow going we had to drop our tire pressures down down to about uh, 1.6 in the front maybe 1.8 1.9 on the back and traveling with me down there doing all the work is Paul Marsh my traveling companion is Paul Marsh a bit of a legend if I may say so Paul is probably the most experienced overlander and overland vehicle builder I know. Well, what we're doing now is we've turned off the main road, the north-south north road that heads past the Mubusa Hubi game reserve and looking at 
the info map as well as tracks for Africa found a narrow bush track leading to a pan called Jack's Pan. We're really in the bush. Absolutely stunning. It is true to say that I learn something new on every expedition I go on. And this one was no different. <laughs> The first thing was how easy it is for external equipment to affect a vehicle's performance. Well, the grass isn't very high now, being winter, but if it was much higher, I'd put on the grass net. Uh, on our way here, we had an interesting experience with some um, overheating problem. It wasn't a serious overheating problem, it was just something that I noticed. This vehicle is fitted with a EGT, an exhaust gas temperature sensor, to warn me because it's an aftermarket turbocharger, to warn me if the internal temperatures in the engine around the inlet manifold and where the turbo will will you know the temperature will affect the, the head and the turbocharger. Um, warn me if it gets too hot so I can then easily accelerate a little bit and it cools down immediately. And I noticed something interesting and this is what we discovered. Overheating, it's often caused by us, not the vehicle. Now here's a situation now, in the Kalahari, very, very flat roads, doing 110. I've got an EGT measuring my exhaust gas temperature and it keeps on beeping. Yesterday, we were driving, driving up in higher ambient temperatures, up steeper hill, and it wasn't beeping. So what have I changed? I put on the number plate. Now it was off yesterday. And the reason why it was off is that I noticed that it was blocking these two orifices here. Now the way the orifices are actually shaped, the steel is shaped, it's shaped in a particular way that allows air to move swiftly into and under the engine bay. So now if I take this off, that's now smooth. I'm now going to see if my EGTs drop. Remember, I only, I only covered it by, what, 15%, 20%? But that edge will cause such a great deal of turbulence there, the air just won't go in. It'll just be rolling around here instead of getting in there and cooling the engine. Let's go and see if it works. So now, <clears throat> sitting at 110, what I've been doing for the last hour there's a bit of a climb EGT it's just just past 600 let's keep it at 110 see if it... I reckon it's that little thing with the number plate is costing us on average 60 degrees exhaust gas temperatures 60 that's a lot amazing and that's going to affect engine power it's going to affect economy a whole lot of other stuff i didn't think it would be that much amazing This is my Land Cruiser 78 Troopy. It was featured in the 2012 television series. That series alone has attracted over a million views on YouTube with many, many questions about this vehicle. I dubbed it the, uh, the ultimate world cruiser. Questions like, what suspension did I use? What fridge did I use? What seat covers did I use? What, you name it. Well, here are some of those questions answered. The most asked question, what suspension did I use? Well, EFS. 
EFS Springs and Shocks. Why? Well, they're a lesser known brand, very, very well respected, and had some experience with them, decided to give them a try, very, very happy. The rear springs, we had to remove one of the leaves, the standard spring was too hard. I also added Firestone Air Springs to help cope with high loads, which up to now I haven't needed to use. I'm an advocate of the raised air intake, although I don't think that they are, they should be necessarily high up on the overlanders priority list. It's a nice to have, but not a have to have. But what they do do is the, the air that goes into the engine will be a little bit cooler. It'll be a little bit cleaner. And I also chose Safari Snorkel, well-known brand. There are some other makes in the market where you'll pay a lot less. The plastics on some of them deteriorate very, very rapidly in the sun. It's a good product. I've used them for years. Traction aids. I chose Max Tracks, not because they're orange, because they work. They really, really work well, and I proved it. But I like them because they're light. They're a lot lighter than almost anything else on the market. And these vehicles, the moment we add an accessory, the weight goes up. The moment the weight goes up, the, the, the stresses on the drivetrain and the chassis go up. The fuel consumption goes up, and a lot of overland vehicles are way beyond their maximum vehicle permissible uh, mass. Lightweight, and they work. My choice of wheel rims raised a few eyebrows. 17 inch. Well, I would have preferred 16 inch, yes, but I wanted to go mags. Mag rims will give me lighter weight, lower rolling resistance, better fuel economy, and it'll, it'll decrease the unsprung weight, so it'll give me better comfort but they don't make a good strong mag rim in 16 inch, at least I couldn't find one. This is 17 inch, XT series, very, very strong rim. The only real disadvantage, and I've only gone up one inch, so the fact that the rim is slightly bigger and the profile of the tire is slightly sl smaller is a slight disadvantage off-road, but minor, really insignificant. I would call it insignificant. If I damage that mag rim off-road, going to be difficult to fix. Steel room is definitely easier to fix. It's a compromise I'm willing to make.